These are some small mind hacks. This will be a quick video, but these are some small mind hacks you can do that will change your entire perspective near instantly. And the first one, I alluded to a couple of these on Twitter, but this is the first one. The first one is a very, very important one. It's probably the most important one. And it's changing I have to, the sentence I have to, or the saying I have to, into I get to. A lot of people are extremely stressed about things that they have to do. And because they have to do them or they understand the importance of doing them, they forget that it's actually a blessing to do them in the first place. Because they're obligated, when you're obligated to do something, you forget that it's actually a good thing. If I, like for example, going to the gym is something people can enjoy. When I was a fighter and I had to go to the gym twice a day, every day, like anything in life, once you're obligated, once you have to, a lot of the fun disappears. So I have to implicates an obligation, whereas I get to implicates a choice. So I'll give you an example. If you wake up and you're really busy and you think, I have to take the kids to school. Three things which are not necessarily fun to do. They're not necessarily, they're everyday activities. They're things that you can be stressed about. You're low on time. You've got to get the kids ready for school. You've got to get to work. And there's a problem with the car. If you change, I have to do those three things into I get to do those three things, the mentality around the actions change. So I get to take the kids to school. A lot of people don't have kids. A lot of people want kids and can't get them. There's a lot of kids who can't go to school. You get to take your children to school, which is, which is, which is the blessing in itself. Forget, I have to take the kids to school. You get to take them to school. Aren't you lucky? I have to go to work. Well, you get to go to work. Imagine you didn't have a job. Imagine right now you lost your job. If you lost your job right now overnight and you had no income, your whole life would be up, upside down. You'd be in turmoil and you'd miss your job very much and you wish you had your job back. So you get to go to work. You don't have to go to work, you get to go to work. That's once again a good thing. Even something as annoying as a car breaking, I have to take the car to the mechanics. Well, at least you get to take the car to the mechanics. Imagine you didn't have a car. Imagine there was no mechanic. So next time you're sitting there looking at your day or looking at a list of things or jobs you have to complete or you're stressed or you're low on time and all these things are happening, I have to do this, I've got to get this done, I have to do this, I have to do this. Change the language. I get to do X, Y, Z. And I guarantee you'll feel better about the activities near instantly. And this is something you can do very, very quickly. This is the first thing you need to do. And this is the second little mind hack. And this video is short because I want you to implement these. I want you to take time to genuinely make sure you implement these two things. Change I have to to I get to. And the second one is, and then I can. So when you have to do something difficult, add a, and then I can on the end. For example, with me, with the gym, I, I, I'm being honest with you, I don't like the gym anymore. I've been doing it too long, but I understand its importance and I don't want to miss it. So I think, you know what? I'm gonna go train, I'm gonna train hard, because then I can relax. So adding, and then I get to, onto the end of basically anything, can give you a lot of motivation. So even the simple activities we labeled earlier, the I have to things, I have to get the kids ready for school, I have to go to work, I have to fix the car. If you change it to, I get to take the kids to school, I get to go to work, I get to get the car fixed, and then I can relax. Or, and then I'm gonna give myself, I'm gonna treat myself, I'm gonna allow myself to have a glass of wine or some ice cream, whatever. Add, and then, onto the end of every single difficult task, and change I have to to I get to. Try that for a week, and you'll see exactly how your entire world changes. Never assume work. My kickboxing coach had a saying, if I didn't see it, it didn't happen. So he'd sit me there to bench press with 100 kilo, bench, bench, bench. He'd go out and talk on the phone. He'd come back 20 minutes later, my arms are obliterated. How many did you do? 62. No, I didn't see it. Start again. If he didn't see it, it didn't happen. If he didn't witness it with his own eyes, it literally did not exist in the universe. It's his universe. It's the world he lives in. If he didn't see it, it didn't happen. It's the same with your work. Don't assume work from your staff. Don't assume things are done. Check on them. If you don't see shit happen, it didn't happen. This is true of the world. It's especially true. I learned this one. I knew this one anyway, but it's especially true with like the cam girls. I worked and I did 10 hours and I made videos. Da, da, da. If you didn't see it, it didn't happen. It's this way with 99% of things in life. If you ain't seeing it, it doesn't happen. It's also, you can apply this to binary, is thing, are things done or not? What you'll often have in business is you'll ask somebody something, is this done? Yeah, 20 minutes. Do you know what that means to me? It means no, it's not done. It's still not done. It happens all the time. Okay, tomorrow. Okay, yeah, later. No, 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 no. Is it done? No, if it's not done, it's in the not done pile. And until it's done and I can cross off the done and I can just forget about it from my mind, it's not finished. 
I want to see it finished and fucking done. Pronto. If you didn't see it, it didn't happen. Keep this in mind, especially with staff, because a lot of them are gonna say, oh, and I did this today, and I did that today, and I did this marketing today, and I had this idea, and I sent these emails, da 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 da. You didn't see it, and you can't verify it, and you can't check on it, it didn't happen. It needs to happen again, and you need to watch it, or you need to find a way to verify it. Oh, you had this idea, and you spoke to all these clients. Okay, well, I didn't hear you speak to them, and I, I ain't got time to check the phone records, so we're gonna call them again. Did anyone buy? No, okay, let's call them all again. I called them yesterday, cool, call them again. Didn't see it, didn't happen, doesn't exist. Next. Everybody loves a winner. This can go down to how your brand works and how your company works. Never, ever, ever admit a problem and never, ever, ever admit that you're struggling. Ever. Don't do that. There's a guy on Twitter who recently started putting on his email list about how it's been a hard year of business for him. That does not make people want to buy from you, bro. It makes people not want to buy from you. Everybody loves a winner. Nobody loves a loser. If you come along and say, my business is fantastic, we make so much money, we have so many clients, we're great, you wanna work with us, we're doing fantastic. People wanna work with you. If you come along and say, well, you know, we're new and we're struggling, we're new, but we're, we're, we're small, so we, you know, we value each customer because we're small. No, oh. we're small, but we make a lot of money because we do a very good job for our clients. Everyone loves a winner. They're gonna love you more if you're a winner. Nobody likes a loser, no one feels sorry for a loser, and no one trusts a loser. No one has confidence in a loser. If you're gonna go in for brain surgery and there's two fucking guys there, you want the guy who's like, yeah, easy, easy, no problem. You want the confident guy. You don't want the guy who's like, uh, don't know, it's the first time I've done one of these. Mm. Even if they're the same qualifications. People love winners, they don't love losers. And winners in life are brash. Get a bit of water. Ugh. Look at me. Ultimate winner, Mr. Winner. What am I? Brash, confident, arrogant. So when I tell you, I'm gonna teach you shit. Did I say, I've run some businesses and I think maybe there's a few things I could teach. No, I told you I know fucking everything. I'm gonna teach you fucking everything I know. And I've made millions and you're gonna make millions. Everyone loves a winner. Come across as a winner and people are far more likely to trust you. Don't be coming across as a loser. Never admit defeat, never admit problems, especially to customers and clients. As far as they're concerned, your company is perfect. It doesn't matter if your office is on fire, you don't have to tell anybody. You have to keep bringing in money. Your warehouse is set on fire. You know what I would do? I've got this company, I sell bouncy balls, my bouncy ball warehouse is on fire. I come in on Monday morning, my bouncy ball warehouse is on fire. You know the first thing I do? First thing I do is I tell all my salesmen, okay, the warehouse is on fire, we can't fill any orders. Call everyone up and try and get some orders. The first thing I do, even when my warehouse is on fire, is tell all my fucking salesmen to try, just like normal, to bring money in. Because that's all the business is, and that's all that matters, and that's all that's gonna fix your problems. I don't say, send an email out and let everyone know that our warehouse is on fire. I don't sit and say, okay, slow down the orders because we're low on bouncy balls, it's gonna be hard to fulfill. No, 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 I say, sell some fucking bouncy balls. I'll fix it later. 